I'm asking you to change your paradigm because we're asking the country to change our paradigm. This is a paradigm shift. We are going to concentrate on one key issue. You might have all these other little sundry issues, some that I already mentioned and some that are even that we haven't mentioned yet. If we do not get our local officials on board with supporting, defending, obeying the United States Constitution, we are now watching our country die. America will no longer exist as it was intended to be, and I don't think it could even be called America if this keeps going much longer. We are watching the death of our country. We can revive it, but it's only going to be in our counties, county by county. So we have got to concentrate on our local officials. The fate, F-A-T-E, the fate of our country does not lie in the hands of Washington, D.C. corrupt politicians. It lies in the hands of the local officials, especially your sheriff. And you know why? Because he has the authority, the power, and the jurisdiction to protect you from the federal government. Yeah. Now, with that, with that in mind, that's what we're going to be talking today. And I, and I was saying just a while ago, I wrote this book, and the title came to me because I was so dismayed and depressed watching Hillary, Barack, and McCain. Um, and at first, now, you probably know I'm a constitutional conservative. I guess that's what we could probably say real easy. I'm, I'm definitely a constitutionalist, um, uh, and, and, I've, and I, I have yet to hear from two people that I disagree with, and that's Judge Napolitano and Ron Paul. Okay, so now you know my political views, okay? Uh, uh, including the war on drugs, uh, which is probably the second worst policy in our nation's history, only that, to that of the IRS. Okay? Um, but I became, my wife, my wife kept telling me, quit watching the election on the news. I'm tired of watching you get so upset. And, and I said, it's like watching a traffic accident or an operation. You're kind of going like this, but, but I had to watch. And, and yes, she was, my wife was right. It made me sick. And, and at first, I actually l really liked Barack Obama. Now, how, now, you know me well enough already to know that there's something funny behind that. Yeah, you don't believe it, do you? You don't believe it. It's actually true. The reason I like Barack Obama at first is because he was beating Hillary. <laughs> huh? Okay. But then, then we ended up with both of them. So, yeah, that didn't work out too good. Not at all. So, the, the, the thing here, though, is it made me so sick that um, I said, what am I doing? I'm, I'm an eternal optimist. I love life, I love my country, I love my family, I love my grandkids. Uh, man, do I love my grandkids. Uh, just really a side note here. My first grandchild, born three years ago, on the 4th of July. I mean, is that a blessing from God or what? I mean, that's an, and, and, and her, her father's from Canada, and she could have been born on the 1st of July, which is the Canadian Day of Independence, but it came on the 4th. And so my daughter came to me right when we were leaving the hospital, and she says, Dad, don't cry, but we're, we're naming her Liberty LaDawn Hardy. I cried. I, she shouldn't have said anything. I cried. Uh, and she's such a precious little thing. Um, but I do love my grandkids and, this is, and, and my children, and this is really why I stand before you today. I love America and my family, and we've got to do something. And after being a sheriff for eight years and being in law enforcement nearly 20 years and doing all the research on this for the last 20 years and winning a case at the United States Supreme Court on the issue of state sovereignty, I've put it all together in a 49-page booklet that is irrefutable evidence 
that the title is true, that the sheriff can and hopefully will protect you from all federal criminality. And boy, there's a lot of it. And that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. There is some hope. But I'm asking you to shift again. If you don't shift your paradigm, how are we going to get our politicians to shift theirs? We got a lot to do, don't we? So remember what this meeting is for. Remember what we're doing after this. And there's so much we can do here. But if your sheriff is not trained and converted to his oath of office, as befits what we're doing with Oath Keepers, if he doesn't know and understand the Constitution, if he does not uphold and defend the United States Constitution, then the rest of what you're doing is really immaterial, isn't it? Including the vaccination thing. Okay? Because you know who can protect you from that too? You bet your damn booty he can. He can. But if, if you go to him right now and say, okay, Sheriff, um, why aren't you doing anything? What's the matter with you? Have you decided to talk to the other sheriffs and do an investigation on chemtrails and uh, the dangers of the flu vaccine to make sure that there's no forced vaccinations here? You think you're going to get somewhere with a guy that has never read the Constitution and doesn't understand the foundation of America and you're going to go to him with that? That's not, that's not going to accomplish much except get you kicked out of his office. Okay? So we're going to keep this all fundamental. And we're going to approach him with this book. And we're going to say, you know what, Sheriff? This book was written by a sheriff who spent 20 years in law enforcement who won a case at the United States Supreme Court to protect the autonomy of the office of the sheriffs across this country. He won. You can see the evidence in this book and it will take you maybe 20 or 25 minutes to read it. It's irrefutable evidence of the true power that you actually possess. And I think it's worthy of your attention. And I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give you a copy. I've read it, and, and all my friends have read it, and, and all the voters that I know in this community want you to read it. And I'll check back with you in a week to 10 days and see what you think of it, see if you have any questions. Or if you'd like to talk to Sheriff Mack in person, I can arrange that too. And, and Sheriff Mack does constitutional training for law enforcement departments uh, and sheriff's offices across this country, and would love to have him come and talk to your whole department. And then you get that going. And uh, right now, th that brings me to the next point. I wanted to make sure, and right at the beginning, I just kind of do a little bit of a commercial message. And this one's probably the most important one of all. www. Okay, I only see half of you writing. <laughs> but actually, you've got the information if you have these. Okay, if you already have that, then you have it. www.usa1911.com. So how else would you say that? USA1911.com. And is that talking about September 11th? No. I already had that talk, right? <laughs> this isn't about 9-11. This is about the emergency our country's in. Okay? So it's USA number one. So it's USA1911. So it's USA1. It's an emergency, 911.com. Okay? And... When I told you this was an answer to my prayers, um, it, it is. And these are some very high up people who have been involved in at very high levels of, of uh, politics in this country, who became just like, a, just like me and just like you, disenchanted with Washington, D.C. politics, seeing that there is no hope there. And if you, any of you still think that there's hope there, then I've got beachfront property for you in Omaha. Because <laughs> it's absolutely absurd. How many times do we have to get hit over the head with the Washington, D.C. bat of corruption before we finally get it? Washington, D.C. is completely irrelevant in this issue. Do we still need to watch what's going on there? But let me tell you, Ron Paul was on Judge Napolitano's show the same day I was. And he said that his bill, even though it has 280 
co-sponsors has no chance 